Hello and welcome to It's Your Business with Mario Taniguzzi on Megapix Media. Joining me today is Archie McLean, who is an assistant professor in journalism at Mount Royal University here in Calgary. Thanks for joining us today, Archie. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm interested in your take of what's been happening right now in, uh, in the world of social media, uh, specifically with, with Donald Trump, the president of the, of the USA. Uh, you know, we've had Facebook, we've had Twitter, we've had now YouTube apparently uh, uh, heard today, uh, quote unquote, banning him uh, from social media. What are your initial thoughts about, uh, about this? Well, it was hard to keep track of all the news. It felt like a bit of a cascade of, of news coming out about social media and, and the president. Um, you know, first it was Twitter and Facebook, I believe, it, including Instagram. Um, uh, the latest list I saw included Snapchat, Spotify, Twitch, uh, Shopify, Stripe, all these various companies were suddenly either banning or suspending uh, President Trump from social media. And, you know, it had this effect of, of tamping down what he was saying at a really critical moment. You know, when we think of Donald Trump, when we think of the rise of Donald Trump, um, we often think of his use of social media, uh, specifically Twitter, but also Facebook as well. You know, he's used it really effectively, uh, both as a candidate and as uh, president, to speak directly to his base, um, to get to raise money, uh, to raise lots of money, to build his profile, um, and to speak around uh, mainstream media or, or people that he views as hostile to him and speak directly to his base. Um, so Trump has been a real master of social media. So, so then seeing him deplatformed in this way was, was rather startling, um, but perhaps a, maybe a logical and unsurprising effect of what had happened at the Capitol last week. Yeah. So let, let me ask you a question in general terms about banning, uh, you know, uh, uh, people from social media. Um, you know, you know, being a, a professor in journalism, being a journalist myself, you know, we champion the cause of free speech, et cetera, et cetera. What are your thoughts on on uh, banning people and, and banning uh you know, for the most part, uh, say free speech on social media channels. Sure, it's, a, it's an interesting issue and certainly a complicated one. And this week we saw um, some reaction to the president's banning specifically from Twitter um, by some unlikely people. Uh, for example, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, raised some concerns about uh, the issue generally and social media's power to stifle free speech in this way, especially when social media companies act uh, together. Um, they have a tremendous amount of power. And, you know, today they ban Trump, but maybe tomorrow it's somebody that, that you or, or I or whoever feels is less odious. So, you know, I think these are real concerns that people have. Have, um, around the power of big tech. I, I think what these companies need to do is uh, put in place more transparent rules about about why they're making the decisions they're making and why they're choosing to do what they do. As of now, it's very opaque. You know, they, they seem to make these decisions on a whim. Um, you know, the president, for example, seemed to have violated any number of Twitter's um, uh, standards, um, but Twitter didn't take action. Then they began to fact check what he was saying. Well, first they ignored him, then they fact checked him, and then they banned him outright. But it, did, it, it felt like they were winging it the entire time. So these companies have a tremendous amount of power and I think owe it to users, owe it to people who care about democracy to have transparency around why they make these decisions. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as private companies, I would say, you know, we're speaking to a business audience. I mean, you, you could imagine, you, you can see why these companies may not want to be associated with Trump. If you own an establishment, say, here in Calgary, and uh, learned that the Proud Boys wanted to use your establishment for a meeting, um, are you obliged to have them there? Uh, do you want to be known as an establishment that hosts uh, the Proud Boys or people who feel that way? You know, you can see why these platforms don't want to be associated with, uh, with Trump and, and his brand right now. Yeah, let's talk about social media in general, Archie. Uh, uh, you know, obviously when, when social media came, came about uh, years and years ago, uh, you know, a lot of excitement about it and, and great to connect with people, et cetera, et cetera, right? And uh, are you surprised at what ha it has become? You know, I think maybe I've traced that arc that you're describing a little bit. Um, I've, I've always been interested in technology and communications as a journalist, as a communicator. I'm sure you're the same way. And we can see and recognize the power of this technology. And that's really, it's, it's really quite a powerful thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I was and, and maybe continue to be to some degree more optimistic about the 
future of, of these technologies. You know, they allow great things and we, we can cast ourselves back uh, to the Arab Spring and the way that people use Twitter and social media to organize and, to, and to, to, to raise their voices and to hear from people that we hadn't heard from before. And that was and continues to be a powerful thing. Um, but as time has gone on, it's become clear that that same technology can be used for some really awful things, whether it's uh, dictators using it or people using it to spread informa misinformation, lies, hate, violence. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a sad commentary that that's where it's, uh, it seems to be headed and where so many people seem to uh, use it for. Okay, one last question for you. Uh, it's a question I get all the time, being a journalist, is, and, and just from general public uh, people out there, is how, how does one, as a general, you know, a person in the general public, how does one differentiate between, between real news and quote unquote fake news? Boy, that's a, that's a tricky question. I would say the first one is, um, you know, consume and support media that you trust, you know, um, whether it's your local newspaper or, or whoever it is that you get your news from, you know, you, if you trust them, then you can be sure that the, the information they're passing along is trustworthy. Um, but when somebody's passed on to you from that you may not be familiar with, um, a good place to start is, is who is producing this news, who is behind it. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be some deep dive into the website. Most credible news websites have some sort of about us statement or a bit of information about who they are and who, uh, uh, who funds them or who who backs the work that they do. And I, I, so I just think a quick check of these things will go a long way, at least uh, to, to helping you understand um, what you're consuming before you read it. Um, and then past there, I think we all just have an obligation to be savvy news consumers. Oftentimes, you know, I passed on a fake news link once in Twitter by accident. I retweeted something that was yeah. incorrect and it was a reflex. It happened like that. If I'd literally, if I'd taken 10 seconds to look more closely at the video, I would have figured it out. But somewhere in my lizard brain, I retweeted it before I even even reconsidered it. So um, even that 10 second pause to think, is this real? Is this contributing to the dialogue that I want to be a part of? You know, that'll often stop people from passing on the most egregious stuff. Yeah, it's a great point you made because even for myself, I remember not long ago, just fairly recently, the same thing happening where, where I, I saw a piece of news and, uh, but from a legitimate news source and uh, I retreated it and then I realized, oh, wait a second, this is old news. Uh, this happened like uh, two years ago, or right? or oh, whatever, right? And uh, so, a uh, great piece of advice about taking a pause and uh, and before the unfortunate thing, though, in this day and age, right, we're uh, we're kind of knee jerk reaction uh, people in this society, and we just uh, live uh, live life in the fast lane, so to speak. So it's tough, isn't it? It's true, and and you know the lies spread a lot more quickly and a lot further sometimes than the truth does. You know, you'll see some, a misstatement that gets spread far and wide, and then the retraction or the apology or the whatever you know gets retweeted twice or something like that. You know, it, the the misinformation has a tendency to spread more quickly. Uh, I lied. I had one more question. <laughs> so so sure. for, even from a personal point of view, uh, Archie, don't you feel sometimes that oh, I just gotta. Uh, take a break from all this, take a break from all the social media. Like, do you advise people to do that? I do. You know, I think uh, media generally uh, can be really all consuming right now. And I think for a lot of people, it actually can create some anxiety, you know, and we can be attached to this. The, these social media platforms are designed to be addictive. They're designed to draw you in to want to get the like or the, uh, you know, the, the thumbs up or the heart or whatever it is. Um, that, that's how they're made. And so, you know, if we, I don't think I think most of us can recognize that feeling when we're spending too much time with our nose in a phone um, uh, wrapped up in these things. So even though, uh, you know, I teach students about making media and about making journalism, um, even I advocate some time away from these platforms. It doesn't do people any good for their mental health to be, uh, to have their nose in it. You know, even following step by step what's happening in the States, you know, this isn't something we can control. And there are times when it feels like, uh, you know, it, it's anxiety inducing, but it's not worth uh, us getting wrapped up in that in their dramas necessarily. Yeah, that's true. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Archie. Thanks, Mario, I appreciate it. Okay, that was Archie McLean, who is an assistant professor in journalism at Mount Royal University in Calgary. This has been It's Your Business with Mario Tanaguzzi on Megapix Media. Thanks for joining us today.